Sepsis. It's a potentially life-threatening condition caused by an overwhelming immune response to an infection. Your own immune system triggers a series of reactions that causes symptoms, including inflammation, swelling, and blood clotting. This impairs blood flow, which deprives your body's organs of essential nutrients and oxygen. If not treated quickly, this can lead to multiple organ failure and even death. In fact, sepsis was the 12th leading cause of death in Canada in 2011, where an estimated 30 to 50% of people who develop sepsis died from it. Is there anything we can do to help those with sepsis? Yes, there is in fact. Meet the Super Sepsis 6. The Sepsis 6 is a group of medical therapies with powers that can reduce the likelihood of mortality of those with sepsis. Their abilities include taking blood cultures, measuring lactate levels and measuring urine output, fluid resuscitation, delivering high flow oxygen, and providing antibiotics. Together, the Super Sepsis 6 can rescue patients as long as they are called upon within one hour of diagnosis. Hey, I'm the first step of the sepsis 6. The first diagnostic step is to take two or more blood cultures before any antibiotics are given. This allows the doctors to find the source of infection. The most important thing to remember is that blood cultures should only be taken before antibiotics if they don't significantly delay antimicrobial administration. Hi, I'm Super Serum Lactate. Serum lactate should be measured and monitored while the patient is in the hospital. Lactate is a result of your body not having enough oxygen and relying on alternative mechanisms to supply your body with energy. Too much lactate in your body can be detrimental. If serum lactate levels are above 4 millimoles per liter, then the nurses and doctors should start more intensive treatment. Hey, I'm the last diagnostic step of the sepsis 6. The last step is to measure the patient's urine outputs on an hourly basis for at least 6 hours. If a patient has less than 0.5 milliliters per kilogram per hour of urine for more than two hours, that is a sign of severe sepsis. Hi, I'm Super Fluid Resuscitation. Fluid resuscitation is the first treatment step. Patients with early sepsis have lower fluid volume because of decreased fluid intake and increased fluid losses. This results in low blood pressure and not enough oxygen being delivered to the organs, which can result in serious organ damage. Fluid resuscitation involves providing the patient with significant volumes of intravenous fluids, usually 4 to 5 liters within the first 6 hours that they are experiencing sepsis. This restores blood volume and increases blood pressure, so more oxygen is delivered to organs. It is dangerous to give the patient too much fluid, so this needs to be monitored closely. Hey, I'm Super Oxygen Supplementation. Our second superhero provides the patient with supplemental oxygen. As the organs are not receiving enough oxygen, oxygen supplementation helps increase the amount of oxygen in circulation. Mechanical ventilation may sometimes be necessary when traditional methods of oxygen supplementation do not work. It's not a bird, it's not a plane. It is I, Antibiotics, here to save the scene. Broad spectrum antibiotics must also be used to eradicate the bacteria responsible for causing sepsis. Canadian guidelines for the clinical management of sepsis recommend that cultures be obtained as soon as a patient is admitted so that an appropriate antibiotic can be administered within the first 60 minutes. In fact, for each hour antibiotics are delayed, the risk of mortality can increase by as much as 7.6%. Some examples of antibiotics that are typically used are penicillins or aminoglycosides, but this really depends on the type of bacteria that are found to be causing the sepsis. Although more research is needed, the sepsis 6 has been credited with decreasing mortality and getting patients out of hospitals faster. The next time your patient has sepsis, consider calling the Super Sepsis 6. If you like this video, check out our website at Demystifying Medicine at McMaster, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter.